In this session, I will continue with dynamic paint, but with a type of waves, which create things like this. So let's go right into Blender, and you should have now dynamic paint, waves, water in your Blender. And if you have that, it's just to follow along and do as I do. Before we continue creating the particles and everything, I will just go through the scene very quickly. So what we have is like at the top here, which will be the emitter. And then we have like a ground, which will be the water. And we have a droplet, which will be the particle for the rain. So no more objects, that is all. Then I have some material in here. So if I go to the word properties, so clicking on that one, you can see that I have an image called Mossy Forest 4K, which is an image that I found on HDRI Haven, and it works very well in this case. And what I've done with that, I can show you if I just split this window into two, and go to the shade editor here, and go to the word here, because then I can see the material we have here, and I can then press a rendered view, so we have everything up and going. Then you can see it looks like this. So we get a lot of good reflection in our scene here, and everything looks nice. But from the beginning, if we get this after we have selected this mossy forest, it looks like this. You don't have that reflection. It, this is what it looks like. And what I've done is a very thin water surface. So uh, it, it has no thickness or something, which means that we can see everything through it. So we can see all the stones below and so on. And yes, we get all the reflection from uh, the sky as well. But since we have some dark things down here, everything looks dull and so on. So what I did was that I just used the reflection of the HDRI and it basically just turned the image upside down. So now it's light and bright and so on because I used the reflection here. And what you see is not a reflection on this surface, you see below the surface. So we have the sky below the surface, we have the leaves below the surface and so on, and that light and all those leaves and so on is shining up so we get a really bright surface and that is exactly what we want in this case. So that is why I did it. Okay, then we can go to Material Preview um, it will not look so nice, but it will explain uh, the animation that I built in here, because I did one short animation to make the water look real. So if you select uh, the ground here, and you change word into object, you can then see the material I use as water here. So I used uh, the Prism shader, I can take this down just a bit so you can see it, the prism shader, and I made a water out of it. It's index refraction like 1.33 something, transmission 1, uh, roughness 0, uh, slight bluish color on it, and that's all. Then I added some bump map, and that bump map is very, very tiny. It's just to get something on the surface here. And I added wave texture to get those waves, but to avoid straight lines, I did some distortion and added a lot of detail and detail scale on that distortion and then we get better waves. Then I needed some animation. So I added a mapping vector and I just changed this x-axis. So if you look at the timeline, you can see that I have one keyframe on one and one keyframe on 250. So if I change the timeline, you can see that the x-axis up here is moving and I also added so it's linear which means that it moves in the same speed all the way so if I now run the animation it looks nice it looks like a gentle wind blowing on the surface and we have water so that's all we did to create water very simple and now it's time for us to add all that rain in so we can take away the top window, so let's drag this up here, so we have one window, and we can go to solid view, and now it's time for us to start everything. So we select the emitter, 
then you go to the particle properties press the plus sign and then we get a lot of particles we can take away half so we only have like 500 left and there should be rain all the time so I change this to 250 at the end the lifetime should be rather short because as I explained this is more or less transparent and if it's long lifetime we will see droplets below the surface so I think I will take this to like 20 and then we can fine tune it later on uh, we don't do anything here but we change the velocity to zero and we add uh, those droplets in so in render we change this to object and the object should be our droplets so now you can see all those droplets is in there in a good way we keep the gravity because the gravity will make the rain okay so i think that is okay and now i will only check the lifetime so i played animation from start and then you can see all that rain is falling down and you can see it's falling below the surface and uh, not so much but just a little bit and uh, i think we can take the lifetime to 19 that will be okay in this case so if i now run it it will still be get better be below the surface but not so much so that is okay now we should produce this canvas um, in the last session we used the paint map we didn't need so many polygons because we created an image that we used later on this time it will be real displacement which means that we will build like those small waves from the droplets uh, physically on our object meaning that we really much really need to have a much amount or high amount of polygons on that plane so we press tab to go to edit mode and then uh, select everything press a or if you have it selected just go on and right click and press subdivide then you take it to like 100 here and yes it will be a lot of small squares here which is okay and as you press tab and we will make this even smaller so we go to the modifier properties add modifier and add subdivision surface now when we do a canvas it's really important that we use the viewport and the render in the same so if you have a render of two you should have a viewport of two in my case i will go up to three here and it's up to you because if you have a weak machine uh, you should probably stay on two and not three but i will use three in this case i can start with two because it will be a little bit faster when I show things, but when I bake and do the render later on, I will change it to free again. Okay, so now I added that, and nothing happens now more than that we have this rain, and I would like that water to get all those waves. So to do that, we add this as a canvas. So uh, select the emitter, you go to physics properties, and you select dynamic paint. And this will be the type of canvas and you select add canvas here so now we get a lot of things here and last time we used image sequence but this time we will use vert vertex in here and that is also why we added all those polygons and we will keep it to, from 1 to 250 that is okay and we keep this sub steps could be changed but we keep that to zero in this case and uh, we used the paint last time but this time we will use waves instead so we add waves here then you have some uh, things here that you can change time scale should be one it should be exactly as it should be uh, we can take down uh, the speed because we have a rather small droplets going down they should not go so fast it should just be like yeah we will change it to like 0 0.4 something we can have a little bit less damping uh, keep that can make that a little bit higher perhaps uh, we keep the rest you can play with those numbers uh, those numbers will make it look real or more unreal depending on the values here I have found out that amount like this that I put in now will be roughly to be something that looks real and you can 
as I said, change them if you, if you want to. But uh, if we have that in, then we have all the canvas. So now we need something to paint with, and that will be uh, the top emitter here, that will be the brush. So we select the emitter in the top, go to dynamic paint again, and we change this to be the brush instead, and then select add brush here. It doesn't matter now if you have uh, these change or not, so we can just keep that to blue and so on. But we change mesh volume into particle system, so we have that, and now we have this particle system. So we, we add it in, and we can change this to 0 0.03, uh, we can have that to 0 0.06, something small like this. And we don't do more than this, then we have that in as well. The next, next thing we should do to make everything work here is to bake all those particles. So we keep our selection on the emitter, but we go to the particle properties. And then we just go down to cache and we select the bake here. So now it starts to bake everything for, uh, our, um, yeah, for our scene here. And normally, before I do this bake, I had changed this subdivision to 3 instead of 2. But as soon as you take it up to 3, it will take much longer time to bake. And I just want this course or this session to be finished in a good way, so you don't have to wait too long. And I don't want to cut, you will see everything in real time. So that is why I do it like this. Okay, so now we have baked everything. And if I now play this animation, you can see all those droplets going down and now something happens here. Can you see it? You get all these nice waves and they are real. They are like, you can see they are bending the physics up and down. So it's no fake. It's real waves that are created in a good way when we do this. So now you have the waves in and all you need to do now is to bake and after you bake it's just to render and everything be fine so you select this uh, as a canvas and then you go to your physics property you go down and you do your bake and it will take some time to bake it and as i said before uh, to make a really good image uh, that really looks nice and so on i think you should have a subdivision of three but uh, as yeah, it's up to, to you and your computer how much you are willing to wait because everything will of course take more time with a lot of more polygons in. So um, yeah, it, it's it's up to you. So after you've done that, then everything is, is uh, in here and everything moves fine. And you can just take and press F12 and you will get your render with all that nice looking waves all over the place like this. Okay, so now you have learned how to use uh, vertex and waves with uh, dynamic paint. So I will continue showing you some stuff with dynamic paint in the next session. So see you there and bye for now.